Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting stream. Well, uh, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world today. So um, I'm excited to be streaming again. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So this is, again, we're just continuing on the journey here of this project of using ZBrush to create, you know, some kind of sci-fi ship that we have here. Um, so <clears throat> I want to make sure everyone can hear me fine and see the screen. So it looks like my audio is good to go. We're all rocking and rolling. So um, I want to go now into the next process. The last stream we talked about, I talked about, um, you know, blocking something like this out, trying to figure something like this kind of a ship out, okay? So I want to move on now to the next stages, which is kind of cleaning up and starting to put some detailing into some of these pieces, right? Because, again, I see this as uh, a multiple-step process. So for me, when it comes to hard surface specifically, um, it's a four step process for myself. Uh, it's all the first step is like the design phase, figuring things out like I did with this from the last stream. And then now the next phase is going to be, I want to clean maybe some pieces up. Hey, Stefano. Uh, thanks for chiming in about the audio. Um, and then I'll start cleaning some things up and start putting some more detail. So for example, again, this is the one I did in the last stream I had. Um, and then this is now the one that is mine that I'm working on. So all my pieces now on this particular one are all clean. What I mean by that, they're not Dynamesh anymore. They all got very crisp, hard surface edging that I would want. Um, and again, keep in mind when I, we say hard surface again, right? That, that perfect 90 degree angle we can get digitally uh, I stay away from that as much as I can. So I'll put a little bit of like in here, there's just a slight little chamfer and that's making that light hit a little bit more. So that's my process now is trying to clean up these pieces and make them be clean. And in many of these cases, I'm going with the approach of keeping the polygon count low for me. So you can see this entire thing's only up in here on the top, the active points is 65,000. And right now it's made up of 24 subtools. So this is what I have in my subtool. And then I'll use my folder system, and which I use a lot. I, which I really love. Hey, Vichar, which I really love doing, especially for the Boolean stuff. Um, i using it over and over and over again. So I've been, you know, with all the changes uh, we've had to make with all this uh, scary virus that's going on, I've been just starting to work on now the front in essence, moving in from, okay, taking Dynamesh and then making it clean. And then now I'm starting to add detailing and make this come to life, right? So like having an actual cockpit in here with some detailing that's going to start popping in and putting places, things in place here. So I want to talk about moving on to this process. Okay. I want to talk about cleaning things up and then moving into doing things like you're seeing here with the cockpit. I want to touch on this, how I did this part right here, um, because I think it's a feature that isn't being used a ton, at least as far as that I've seen. And I want to make sure I touch on that also within this stream. Uh, so I'll be looking at, in this stream, we'll be looking at the, the Ziri Mesher, some features uh, that I like to use within Ziri Mesher. I'll be looking at some examples of like, how I like to use Polygroup it. And Z Modeler as well, how I like to use Z Modeler to do certain items. And then I'll show how some insert mesh brushing. And then also we'll finish off with how I did this little bump here. Okay. Uh, hold on, I'm just reading a question from Lord of the Mountains. It's a good name. I like that name. How can you insert an edge in different places while repeating the distance? Uh, there's a couple ways you could do that. Uh, okay, so you're asking in essence with beveling. So that's a, so, well, there's inserting and then there's beveling. So here, well, let's, 
to answer that question, okay, because we're going to go into this and cleaning this up, but I'll answer this question from Lord of the Mountains. I like, I like, I like saying your name. It's a good one. Okay, I'm just going to make a, a cube, and let's make this cube have a little more. I'm going to get rid of the poles. I'm not a big fan of the poles, so we're just going to make another cube this way. And again, there's more than one way to do this, and we're going to be covering this, okay? So I'm going to now switch to Zmodeler, okay? So you are looking at, in essence, you wanting the bevel things, right? So obviously in Zmodeler, there's a bevel, and then you have complete edge, you have partial, and then you have a poly loop, right? So I'm doing it along the edge, and then you have a single row, two row, four, and so forth. So... If I'm looking to just have a bevel that's kind of like a flat, an SNC means something like this, where it's just flat like that, I don't need to change this option, single row. Okay, it's really not necessary. These options are mostly there for specifically when you're looking at trying to do like a soft edge, right? Or add an exact sharpness to your bevel. Okay, so I can do like this, right? Which there's really nothing happening. So if I come down here and say, give me four rows, right? You can see that there's more edges being added through there, right? So this is what the rows are starting to do, okay? So I can add a bevel, right? With more edge looping. So very rarely do I change this modifier, right? I like to, in essence, keep it uh, on the defaults, most cases, right? Because then you're just, you're adding geometry through here that isn't necessary. However, the nice thing about this and where sometimes I will use this is that I'll do maybe something like this, like a two row, right? And then now you've got a perfect edge loop going through the middle of that bevel. It might be something you want to do. Or if we go back to this four row, you have something like this and then I can come down here and say, do a poly loop, right? and then push in, and then that gives me, I know I've got that nice loop going around my surface, okay? So this is maybe where I would use something like this. Okay, so with that said, you know, doing different locations, okay, that I wanna be able to do is, I like to use this add to curve, okay? So, what I'll do with add to curve is you just click on, in essence, the curves that you want to af affect. Okay. And now that I've clicked on curves in different locations, when I scroll over, you can see it says delete curve. So, of course, we hold the space bar. I can change that to a bevel. And then you can see we get these same options back again. And now you just click on any one of the curves and then you'll get it there, right? And this is how I like to do kind of these kind of accents right here. So like this is a really nice thing to just kind of break up the line that's perfect through some of the hard surface edging. So I will use this technique a lot. So this would be a way maybe I could go do multiple different edges and there you go, right? So to your other question, Mountain, you were asking about, I just, I love abbreviated the Lord of Mountain to Mountain, about inserting an edge. Okay, there is, with inserting a single edge, there is no way to just say, okay, you want an edge with that distance and then you want the same thing over here. That's, that's not how this is going to work for you, okay? So you're not going to have the ability to sit and say, okay, I want that, and then now just click here and it does the same thing. Because a single edge is just looking at wherever the cursor is, that's where it's laying down a single edge, Okay, if this makes sense to you. So there's going to be other things that we can do, though, to do kind of what you are asking in, in some certain cases. Okay, so number one would be you could switch to multiple edge loops. Okay, and then with this, you have interactive. So you have the ability to add edge loops, and then this one will work where you're doing something like this. And then if I need B, I can delete those, delete delete those, and now I have, right, the same distance here and the same distance there, right? Because I used this to give me the ability because I know this will do that. So you have a specific resolution ability. So I can say three and then just tap and then tap, and I've got three, 
right? Or I can say drop it down to two, right? And then tap and then tap. And now I've got those. So you are able to do this with the multiple edge loop ability, okay? And then this is now being, this is being stored in the brush because it's remembering in these options what we're doing within the options themselves, right? Where the difference is the single edge, you see there's no options, okay? So it's, there's nothing to remember. So the only thing it does is wherever your cursor is, that's what you're clicking on, okay? Now, another way that you could go about doing this, all right? And then this is where you can even do different angles. Okay, so in essence, you're having a 360 degree range. So I'm going to turn on the uh, the gizmo. Okay, I.E. gizmo here. I.E. I should start doing. I'm going to turn on the the gizmo. The gizmo. I'm just going to put Mr. Ming, Ming up. Don't feed him. It's in the dark after midnight. Okay, so. <clears throat> What we can do here then is this maybe an option for you is using a deformer, okay? So I can click on this little gear and then you're going to have this big box that pops up. Along the top, we have um, some geometrical shapes, which is very handy. I use those a lot when I'm doing this stuff with the hard surface, okay? And then below that, all these are our deformers, okay? So there are slicing tools within here, right? So you can see there's a slicing tool right here where you can do slicing if you want to, okay? And then these cones are different controllers, right? So you have a slicing width ability, okay, through here. And then you have, okay, I want to slice in what axis. So these are your axis of symmetry. This is gonna be your creasing. And then this is gonna be inflating. Okay, do you want any kind of inflation happening, All right? And this blue dot, in essence, is your slicer, right? So right now, I'm moving the blue dot around, and I can change this, right, at any time and move this around. So right now, I'm not using symmetrical, right? So here, we'll turn this off and turn this off. So we're just going in one direction, right? So... This is kind of adding slices right there. And then I can say, all right, what's the width I want of those slices? Okay, so you can see I can change that, right? And then I can make it symmetrical. So now I can have that same thing on both sides here, symmetry-wise, along the Z right now. So this is a great way for me to be able to do, especially if I'm like, I want something like this, right? And then this is why we put the inflate Maybe I want to inflate it in so I can inflate it in or inflate it out as well, right? So I have this ability to create something like this, right? This would be the same thing as if, okay, we come out of this and now I have this and I just say Q mesh and I say polygroup all and then I push it in, right? So you have that step as well, right? This is a great way to be able to have different variations there in a symmetrical slicing. Now, with that said, you also have the ability, okay, not just to do this type of slicing, right? You also have a multi-slice ability. Okay, so there's slice and then there's multi-slice. So if I'm gonna click on this, you'll see we get that blue dot in the middle. Okay, we get our cones again. And again, when you see, when you scroll over the cone, we give you what the cone does. So this is saying, do you wanna have creasing? I'm gonna say, yes, I want creasing, okay? And then now you have your symmetry axes in essence. Okay, so you get X, Y, Z. So obviously the green is referring to Y. So I'm gonna turn on my magnifier here for a second. Okay, so there's your cones. So the green cone is your Y, the red cone is your X, the blue cone is your Z, okay? <clears throat> and then you have a white cone, which is, is your resolution, okay? So, as an example, we can say, all right, I want to have a slice along there, and I want what type of resolution, right? So, this is playing with the gap, right? So, I can go along this, right? And then I can say those two slices are now there and there, and if I don't want creasing, I can turn the creasing off, turn it back on, right? And then I can add more slices or less slices, 
So this could be a way for you to do this. And then because this with this blue dot, I can move this to anywhere, right? And if I start going up, okay, in essence the Y, I can say I also want to cut along the Y as well. So now I'm having a slice along two axes at the same time. And then I can have different resolutions for those. I can have different depth for those if I want to as well. So which is really nice. And then so now if I'm going up the Y, you can see this one. And then I can change my resolution on that. And now I've got a thinner Y slicing happening. And I got a wider Z slice happening. What's happening to Drunko? All right, so Lord of Lord of the Mountains. Does that help answer some of your questions? Because the thing you also got to remember about what's nice about the deformers as well is I have the ability to use this gizmo, right? So what I mean by that is I can rotate the model, right? But I can also just say, you know what? I want to rotate just the gizmo at 45 degrees, right? And then come here and then now let's say multi-slice. And you can see that slice now is happening along this axis point now, right? And then I can say no creasing. And now I'm having a 45 degree slice going across this cube. You're welcome to my mountains anytime. <laughs> Love this is such a fun name, man. That's awesome. I hope you you use that everywhere. You should wherever you go. You know, you should introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Lord, Lord of the Mountains. First name Lord, last name Mountains. <laughs> okay, so this would be a great example. So to answer your question, the single insert edge loop will not work with Z model in the sense of the way you were asking your question. And then the other way that you guys could go about doing this is as a user defined ability, okay? You do have slicing ability here, right? So this is just free willed slicing, right? So if I make one there, so obviously the benefit to me here is looking at the floor, okay? If I'm looking at this blue line right here, that's saying the positive Z part of the world. So if I did, this is what I will do sometimes. I'll put a slice and say, okay, I wanna slice here Right, but obviously I want that on the back end. So then this is where I would use something like mirror and weld. Right, and I'd switch to the Z and then mirror and weld it. And now I have it on both sides. Right, so this will work obviously if I'm dealing with symmetrical items. Right, so again, in your geometry modified topology. So the, the thing here, I guess I'm trying to get a point across, there is multiple ways to go about adding slices and edge looping. Right, And then each one of those are going to be beneficial depending on what you're trying to do. And in fact, where I'm going today is where I'll start using some of these features more or less right, to start getting to a certain point of how I want stuff to be looking like and what I want it to do. Okay? Okay, I'll add it to the list for the uh, your request. Request taken, noted. I'll add it to my list. Okay, so <clears throat> so moving along now. Go back to looking at what I've been doing with my ship now. And again, I would love for you guys all to watch part one of this stream. If, you, if you're just tuning in for part two here, uh, I would love for you guys to be able to follow along and post on ZBrush Central. I know somebody had to actually did it and went and watched the video and made a cool sci-fi ship. So I would love for you guys to go along the path with, go along the journey with me. Okay. So, and again, my, uh, my ZB, ZBrush Central name is, uh, I'll put it in the chat right now. Why not? I, I it might help if I actually select the chat. There you go. So if you guys do this, on ZBrush Central, the at Pixo Paul, I'll see, I'll see it. I'll actually get an email and say, hey, somebody at you on ZBrush Central. So I encourage you guys to take what I'm going through here and let's do this. Okay. So Lisa needs braces moments are coming up here. They're coming up. Let's pay attention. 
Okay, so I want to start cleaning things up. So before we start getting into all these other little details, let's go back to the ship that I was did in the last stream. And, and let's just take a look at some pieces here and how I might want to clean them up. I want to show various techniques to you here, okay? So let's just look at this piece right here. Let's just look at this piece that we have in the front, okay? And I'm going to solo this out, right, and take a look at what we have here. So we have just the Dynamesh piece right so <clears throat> figuring out my idea and i was staying really low right i wasn't really millions of polygoning this up okay which obviously if you take you could do this and you would have even possibly less cleaning up or approach to do so i want to show the approach of in this sense where we've got meshes they're all there's three pieces of geometry here all three are different polygroups. So let's focus on, say, this piece. Okay, so I'm going to split this off. And now we're only looking at this piece. So I'm going to unsolo this and we'll turn everything off but this piece now. So I did that by holding the shift key and clicking on the eyeball, right? That'll give you guys your solo out, right? In essence, all subtools, but the selected subtool stays. Okay, so <clears throat> this is where something where I might like to do so i will duplicate this as an example all right then i'm just going to rename this i'm going to rename this clean cockpit right and i know i'm going to want to do some stuff with um z modeler with this so then my approach is okay i didn't know that maybe when i was designing this so this is too dense it's almost seventy thousand polygons it's really too dense to use z modeler for really the benefits that Z-Modeler is going to give us. And obviously, this is not all quadded. It's got a lot of triangles in it. So I'm not going to be able to get things maybe that I want to be able to get out of this. So I'm duplicating this. And then this is where I like to use the gizmo. Okay? So this gizmo is sitting way over here. I'm going to center it with our little map finder. Okay? And I'm going to say, you know what I want to do is I want to delete this and replace it with something else. So I'm going to replace it with a, a cube. So I'm going to click on that little gear again. Gear. Look up here. Look up here. Look up here. Look up here. All right. So I'm going to click on that gear and I'm going to click poly cube. And what happens is where that gizmo is placed is where the cube goes. So let me redo that. Okay. So as an example, let's move this somewhere else. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here to to this settings and click on the poly and you can see that's dropped where my gizmo is. This is really actually a, a beautiful a, ability here. <laughs> I scared you, Guillaume. <laughs> Sorry, get used to it. I like to do this crazy stuff. This Just making sure you're staying awake. I'm here for the user. Okay, so going backwards, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm centering it on this mesh. I'm going to replace the mesh, okay? And for me, I'm going to get rid of all the spans of topology. So I just want a six-sided cube. So that's what these all these cones are doing in this case. These cones are allowing me to change uh, the um, number of spans I have across. Sorry about that, Guillaume. <laughs> across the... Uh, what we're doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the other one that we've been, that I have, that was kind of my designed one. And again, in the design, I didn't know I was going to want to do Z modeler. Now I want to do. So this is a, a quick way for me to get something that's going to be very low, low polygon. All right. So I'm going to turn on my transparency so I can see through this. And all I'm going to really do is quickly move this cube to kind of match the general silhouette. So I'm going to use the gizmo. And what I'm doing here, if you notice, I'm turning on the white box. This, you know, when we added this, I thought, okay, this is pretty cool. I can see myself using it. And we added it specifically for the deformers. But I'm telling you, I use this so much. It's crazy how much I use this now, how much for me it's become a very important workflow. So what I'm doing is unmasking and masking points. So, for example, these points right here, normally we old school way, I would do this where I'd mask off and inverse it, right? Or you would just mask off these 
back points, right? Which makes sense, and now only these front points are going to move. You know, in a case of something like this, where it's pretty low polygon, okay, this is great. But when you're dealing with something that's a little bit higher, or maybe some other techniques, right? Especially when we start getting into deformers here, this is where doing this is going to be beneficial, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm doing the masking, right? And if you look, right, I'm doing snapping, snapping. It's like West Side Story now. Okay, I'm going to hold, I'm doing this because my hand's no longer on the keyboard. That's why I'm doing this stupid thing, All right? So now I'm going to hold the Alt key as an alternate. And now what I'm getting is a white box. So what happens is anything that's in that box stays unmasked. Everything outside the box is getting masked. So if we do this with something with, here, let's do something with a little more grit to it. Let's just load something like this. You're doing this, right? Which is normal like that. And then I would do an inverse like this, right? So this is how the old way I would do this. I would do a mask and say, oh, I want to mask. I want to unmask actually something down the middle and hold control and tap and I would do this. I don't do that anymore. Now I do this and you can see I get the same approach. So something like this you would think is not that big of a deal, but it's actually quite huge. It's saving me time. And now it's become a muscle memory for me that I'm just doing it all the time. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to be going through this and I'm not going to keep covering this now. It's just what I'm going to do. Okay. So then I'm going to come to the front now. And let's say, okay, I need to get the silhouette. I'm going to go with the widest portion of that silhouette there. Okay. So now I have pretty much what I want. Okay, and now what I want to do, I'm going to turn off Ghost so I can see through this a little bit better. And it looks like I need an edge loop here. Okay, and I need an edge loop here. Okay, so now here's the benefit of this, you can see. And now I'm just going to move that to match that positioning. And then move that to match that positioning. Right, and so now I've got that silhouette. Right, and then now I need another edge loop right here. Okay, and then now these four on the top need to come pushed in. So this is a quick way for me, in essence, to reduplicate that surface. So now obviously our difference here, okay, we're turning off transparency, is we've got now a model like this and we got a model like that, right? So they're the same thing. But now I'm really low polygon. So now I'm 20 polygons compared to 69,000 polygons. So I don't need this one anymore. I can delete it. And now I have this. Okay, and now I'm going to do the magical button of hitting the D, 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 right? Which is for dynamic subdiv. I'm going to say yes, yes, yes. Always, always have that on. Right? And now wonderful. We got a wonderful lump of coal. Okay? This is where... Gizmo wants a snack. Okay, so this is obviously not working for me. So I'm going to crease my edges now. So in our geometry, I'm going to throw open up this crease option. And for this sake right now, I'm just going to say crease. And you can see what gets creased. So what's getting creased is any angle that's 45 degrees or higher gets a creased angle, right? So... This and this, right, has a certain degree of change. What's controlling that is the slider right below the crease button. So you can see there's a tolerance set at 45. Okay? So now that you have this, right, so I can turn this down. I can say 15 degrees and then crease it. And you can see more edges get creased now. And this is probably what I want. For this sake, I'm just going to say crease all and just crease all my edges, right? And then now I have a dynamic turned on. So I'm holding the shift key and clicking on dynamic subdiv. Hold on, I think, hold on, sorry, I'm going to have to sneeze. Okay, there we go. So <clears throat> right now I'm looking at this mesh and it looks like nothing's changing, nothing's happening, okay? Comics legend, I'll come to you in, sec in a second. So for your question, if there's polygon snapping. <laughs> so right now, right here, you can see this slider says two. 
I like to, this is just my preference for defaulting when I'm working with Zmodeler. I like to change this to four, and then this crease level down here, I like to start with this at two, and then you can see what starts to happen. So I start to get a little bit of what I had, but it's not quite there. So I'm going to say, you know what, I need a little bit more crease in there. So now I have a crease level of three and a subdivision level of four. Okay. The audio is clipping. Is it better now? Uh, let me try. Hold on. Let's try this a little bit. Let me try this. Let's see. Is that better for you guys? The, I'm turning it down in uh, OBS. Is this too low now or is this good? You got, let me know if this is too low because it's definitely not getting in the red right now. So I want to make sure that your audio is good to go before I move on. And I'm already allowed. Too low now. Jimmy says it's too low. I can't win with the audio today. All right, let's go this high. This should be pretty high. This should be good. I'm sitting around 80% strength. So that should be good to go now. Okay, Lord of the Mountains has spoken. It's fine for him or her. Okay. On fire, and Jimmy, you're giving me the fire symbol as in it's too loud, hot. <laughs> okay, so you can see here, what we're doing here is I have subdivisions four, so I'm getting a preview of what if I divided this four times, but I'm telling ZBrush you can only hold the creasing for three of those four. Again, only hold them for three of the four, right? And so in essence, if I was to change this to four, it's going to go back to looking like that, right? So I want three, okay? And I don't like what's happening in here. So this is where I come back to this and I say, okay, let me just add an edge loop in here. Okay, and then I'll say, what does that look like now at three? That's getting better. And then here, I'm actually just going to do a quick mirror and weld. So it creates an edge loop down the center in there. Okay, that's looking better. I'm looking how that looks, right? So, you know, from a distance, right, we're getting a little bit more what I want. And let's just, for giggles, let's add an edge loop there. Yeah, let's add an edge loop there. I like that a lot better. So now... I'm getting, this is more realistic of a hard surface, right? So it's still very hard surface, but I have some nice beveling happening on all the edges. Now, hello, Benny. For a model like this, okay, what I could do, let's do an uncrease all. So it's back to having no creasing. So now it just looks like a lump of coal again. Okay, and I'm going to turn off this subdiv right? So in essence, the dynamic is turned on, which I turned on with D as in dynamite, right? And then shift D turns it on and off, right? So this button you're just clicking go is on and off is D and shift D. Okay. So <clears throat> what I want to do now is use this. I'm going to put this at one and you can see I instantly get a bevel on every single edge. And I want to change my coverage a little bit and go a little bit bigger. You know, let's go even a little bit more. Yeah, something like that, I'll say. Okay. And if I turn on my polyframe, what's happening here, if you guys can see, well, we're going to zoom in. Every single edge loop is getting two edge loops on either side. Right? So let's think if I've got this edge loop that I've put in, okay? I'm now telling ZBrush, put an edge loop here and put an edge loop here and then create a bevel there, right? So right now I've got Q grid one, bevel one, and I got a bigger coverage and I'm saying constant. Constant's gonna be a really important one that's on by default because if you notice, some beveling will get wider in certain spots than in other spots. Right, so constant helps take care of that and making sure there's consistent beveling. Because obviously between each edge loops here, there's different distances, which affects the beveling. So I'm pretty much always having constant on. So you could have a bevel like I have, or you can do a chamfer, 
right? Which the chamfer is more of a rounded bevel and not a flat bevel, more like a like this, right? Not like that. So when I do that, okay, I'm now chamfering. You can see your coverage now, but this is where maybe your Q grid, you could even put up a little bit, right? And then now your coverage can be changed. And if we look at the profile, let's look in this corner, see it's rounding. You can really see it right here on this corner too, right? Right, and then so you can see the coverage, I'm messing with that rounding. And then this grid, right, is giving me, in essence, more edge loops. So you can see how busy the topology is going to get when I convert this, right? So I'm usually a guy that likes, if I'm going to use this, I'm going to keep it around something like this, and then that's good enough for me, right? I just want that overall bevel to happen everywhere. I don't go about that thick, right? So, and then there's a reason why I'm doing this. This is going to get into like how I did the windows and everything for me. I am the loudest voice man ever, Eamon. I, that is true. It's just in my nature to be loud. Okay. So now I have this clean piece, right? It's good to go. So going back, going back to my original here, right? And again, this is what, what, we're, what we're all trying to make. So here, let me turn off the thumbnail. Not the thumbnail. I want to keep the thumbnail. I like the thumbnail. I mean cam view. And again, let's just put this guy up here in the top just so I have it. You know what? In fact, let's do something else this time. Let's not do what I did last time. Let's do this. I'm going to export my document. I want to bring actually this in as just a reference image. So I'm going to export this. Uh, I'm going to say the desktop's good. Okay, perfect. I'm going to come in here into my texture. Okay, I'm going to click import. Right, and now I'm just going to import the image I just saved out. Okay, which is in essence the document, right? So here it is. Okay, and then I'm going to say add to spotlight. And now what I have here is a copy of my image. So let's, let's put the opacity up all the way and I'll just move this to the top. Something like this, just so I have a referencing of what I am doing. Let's play with the intensity a little bit. Okay, and now I have that, right? And in fact, let's even go paint and let's hold the control key while I'm doing this. And it's going to fill with the white color because that's what's selected. So I'm going to hit the V key for victory and then hold control and mask out. So now the only thing that is visible is my ship in this image, right? And so now I hit the Z key and now I have something like this. And then now I just have in essence a reference up here. All right, this is just for us to have something for a reference image, okay? And if I really wanna use this for, as a reference image, I will come here into the brush palette and in samples, I will turn off the spotlight projection option. So this, that's telling ZBrush, I don't, want to have the image of which is in my ship in the top corner to be used as a sculpture element or a painting element. I don't want it to be used to project onto the surface. So in essence, I'm turning spotlight into like a referencing thing where I just want a floating image. And I'll do this a lot. I like doing this. I'm just reading a question. And Yeah, I would love to see you rebuild. And again, by all means, please post. But if you guys are want to go down this, again, this these streams that I'm doing here for this project, I'm updating as we go through here. So the first stream was just blocking out. Now we're getting into cleaning things up. And then I'll go further and further along in this project. So I encourage you to watch. Um, what's up, Marty? How's it going, man? I'll encourage you to go back and watch the first stream. Okay, where I'm blocking out things and getting to the point that we have. And now we're talking about getting the details through here. Okay, so, so this one is now clean. 
Okay, so this is that was one technique that I can use. Now, there's going to be other techniques, okay, that we can use. So as an example, let's now break this one off, okay, and let's split this one out, and let's rename this uh, docking bay because I'm going to have this where in my design, I'm making this that this opens up, and then vehicles will be able to pull in here, right? So this part, in essence, is the cockpit, right, that I'm making. And then this is going to be where the vehicles for this, because this this thing that I'm making is like a cargo ship. It's meant to carry soldiers and meant to carry vehicles. So it's 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 rather large. It's not tiny, right? Think think I guess Prometheus. I know you love the movie, but think about the, the actual ship Prometheus. Okay, if you want to go that route. Okay, so doing something like this, there are other approaches for us. Okay. So one thing that I might want to do is coming here to my plugin and going into polygroup it, right? And then this plugin is going to allow me to make polygroup seeds in essence, okay? So what I'm going to do is just tap and you can see there's a seed and then I'm going to say I need that to be yeah, a little bit stronger. Okay, it looks like that's good. Perfect. Then I'm going to say, okay, give me another seed there. Give me a seed there, another one there, 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 and there. Okay? So every face here has a seed. And I can go to each one of these and I can change the growing ability of this. So you can see it's growing through the piece. Okay? But what I'd rather do is just do Control F. Okay? Which... Control F is just saying, hey, extend this, right? Okay, so I could click on one of these and then I could just grow it out individually like that. So I'm just doing Control Shift X, right? It's the same thing as grow right here. But what I'm going to do is tell it just extend every polygroup until it meets another polygroup, right? So now every one of the polygroups, you know, are extending a certain way. Right, so the back I'm not I'm not liking. I actually need a point there, and then there we go. Right? So now I've got polygroups on every face. So when I say okay, you see it comes back with this, and now I've got different polygroups, right? For each plane in essence. Right? And I'm trying to give you guys approaches and ideas of here of you know, depending on what I'm doing. How's it going, Jose? Good vibes. Right, of a ways to clean things up based upon when I was designing elements, right? And now that I have this, okay, it's simple for me to come here to deformation and then use this polish by groups. And what that's going to start to do is polish up, okay, my piece. And I can start getting very, very sharp, right? So the more I do this, the sharper and sharper this is going to get. Right, and all I'm doing is I'm looking at the polygroup and creating a nice clean line. So what I've also done here is I've opened the circle up. Okay, so when you guys see this, here I'm going to turn on magnifier, magnifier, magnifier. Everybody, get ready for it. Lisa needs braces. Moment. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. Look up here. Look, look, look up. Look, 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 look up here. Look up here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and Guillaume, where are you lost? Where did I lose you? Tell me where I lost you. This is a Dynamesh. Yes, this is a Dynamesh piece that I designed in the first stream for this project. And now I'm cleaning it up. I want it to be sharp because I want it to be hard, better hard surface than what I have here. So I'm showing you a technique using Polygroup It along with this polish by groups to make it nice and clean. And now that I have an open circle and closed circle, open circle means don't worry about the form. Just do whatever you want to do. Closed circle means, in essence, just like a fist. Keep it a fist or keep the form as much as you can. Open hand, think about it in that sense, it's an open hand. I can move my fingers around. I can create different silhouettes, right? So think about the circle in that sense. Think closed circle. It's got to stay like a fist, open circle. I've got formability 
right? And now I'm just going to say repeat to active, repeat to active, right? And now I'm just repeating the same algorithm over and over and over again, which that algorithm was the polish by groups, okay? And now I've got this super clean piece, right? And then, then I can, now I can move on if I want to, right? So this is approach for me to do this. Now, again, I don't like the really crisp, 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 hard part portion, right? So this is where I would probably, I know I'm going to maybe want to use the modeler on this, possibly down the road. Yes, we're streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Right now, this broadcast is going to our Twitch channel, our YouTube channel, our Facebook, and Mixer. Right, so all three are actually, we're, I'm sending to all three of those for your question. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to remesh this with the Z remesher. Okay, so I'm going to have symmetry on. I'm going to say keep groups on. This smooth groups, in essence, is like the same thing that I just did, which is going to the deformation and doing polish by groups. So I'm actually, I'm just going to turn that off. I don't really need it. So why add that part of the algorithm? And I'm going to put my target polygon count to 500. So it's at 0.5, right? So that's what this is saying, right? By default, it's going to be 5, which is 5,000. I want to get a lot lower, so I'm going to do 5, and then I'm going to remesh this. And so because I took the time to create the polygroups really quick and took the time to clean up my surfaces, i got to start playing with this remeshing and seeing what I get. Okay, so it looks like it's having some difficulties with this down this line. So this is where now I start experimenting and seeing, okay, what if I add some more polygrouping edging in here, right? So I got to now start to see, see, make sure there's not another polygroup in here. Oh, there isn't one in there. And let's say, let's throw the smoothing on now and see maybe if that'll help out. Okay, so all I'm trying to do is just clean up the surface as much as I can, right? So I got to find the right settings for this and then remesh this up, right? So it's an experiment to see what's going on. So I can use polygroups, I cannot use polygroups, and it looks like it's not liking this very much for some reason, so... Let's try and re-dynamesh this. I'm going to turn the groups off. I'm going to re-dynamesh this. So I want to keep the polygroups. So I'm going to turn this painting off. I'm going to re-dynamesh it with groups off. And then we can see if we get a better result this way. There, that's getting better. Right? And then the same technique, or I'm going to do a polish once. And then I'm going to Z remesh that. There. Now I'm starting to get a lot better result. Right? So the goal here is making polygroups. And I'm just trying to get something that's a little bit more clean. So that when I go to divide this, right, I get this. This is what I'm trying to get to is having something like this. Where I'm having nice roundness. Because I know I'm going to divide down the road. So I'm trying to create a piece. And you got to remember in the grand scheme of things, right, this is sitting... Right, if we turn everything on, that's where this is sitting. Right, so now I have this clean version and this clean version, right? And then this is my main cockpit, maybe, that I'm going to have, or this. So you can see in mine, I made this little part right here where, the, in essence, the bridge is going to be to this ship. And then this is something else that I'm working on as we go here, okay? What does the brush icon do in the sub tool palette? Oh, this. This is poly paint. So this is turning poly paint on and off. You know what? This is actually something I'm glad this, this happened actually. So as an example, when you guys, I don't know if you guys even know this, there is a feature within Dynamesh. So when you guys are using Dynamesh, right, you guys can start making, let's say, poly groups like this. Okay. And then when you read Dynamesh, Okay, so if I start now sculpting on this and I redynamesh, you can see the polygroups are maintained, right? You could actually do one of two. You could either maintain polygroups or 
if you had painting on this, maybe your painting is more important. So if we switch to the paintbrush, so this is definitely tangent alert, tangent alert, tangent alert, tangent alert, right? If I say, okay, I got the paintbrush, let's fill this with white. So I'm going to color fill object and I'm going to just pick a color now and I say, okay, I want to do some red, throw some green on this, throw some blue. Okay. So when you now redynamesh, you can see, right, the color is being maintained. So if I now switch to sculpturally, right, see the colors being maintained and now the polygroups are gone. So what happened to me was I knew I had the paintbrush on. Okay. So this paintbrush is your poly paint. So if I turn this off, right, now you're pretty much telling ZBrush, don't show the paint that's on here. I can go back to, say, having poly groups like this, right? And then now if I sculpt, I read Dynamesh, okay? And then this paintbrush is your paint. But now that paint I did is gone. So it's one or the other in Dynamesh mode. So you can either maintain your poly groups or you can maintain your paint, Okay, it can't do both, right? Because the poly paint's vertex changes, right? So it's right now you can only do one or the other. So that's what was happening. So I, I was turning off the paintbrush because to me, what I was doing, what more important was the poly grouping. ZBrush Princess, why are you sad? Oh, why not both? Listen, I would like a lot of things. It's the code. It's the challenge of making sure the code can do both, obviously. And then there's a performance thing that has to happen, right? So all that, all those factors come into play. Right, but it's easy, guys, it's easy to project like just paint, right? Don't forget... We have this ability. There's so much things we can do now. So I'm doing this, right? And there was a point I had paint, right? So if I have undo history, which I do, I go back to the paint part, right? I'm going to hold control and tap on that, right? That creates a marker for this, right? So that marker is an undo history po point, excuse me. And at that point, I had paint, right? So now I can say here, Come down here, come here to project, and I'm gonna turn off geometry and only turn on color, and I'm gonna say project history. Yeah, and I'm gonna say always project the paint, and bingo. I now have the paint back on the model that is actually differently sculpted differently. Did you guys get that? This is like for the users, right? This is definitely a get ready for it. Look up here, look up here moment, right? This is what's great. Forget about the fact that we just also have the brushes that can do this as well. So you can do this by brush base, right? So I can switch to the history brush and then I can tell it I only want paint and I want all of it and I can just paint back, you know, what I want, right? Through here, right? So now it's just going to start giving me this painting, okay? But what I just did is, you know, instead of that, let's just make it quick one button I'm telling color, reproject all, and now I got the paint. And the reason why it's not red here is that vertex have changed, right? In the original undo, it was more of rounded, and now this is like an indention, right? So think about this like fishing, right? So when you're fishing, you know, if I want to catch the bigger fish, let's say they're sitting further on down the lake, and small fish are on the top, so obviously I want the big fish, so I want to have more fishing line to get to those fish. So that's the same thing. So you have a distance slider here. So I can say, let's just throw the distance all the way up and project it, and then now you see I get the paint. Right, so this, I'm not even worried now the fact, I know uh, uh, Z, uh, the ZBrush Princess was sad, but hopefully this makes you unsad and shows you a great example of this addition that we did in 2020 is huge, right? It opens up so many things for me now. It really opens up a, a lot of stuff. What's happening, Chris? Nice to see you on Facebook. 
Okay, uh, hold on, I'm just looking. Side effects. Yeah, then then you can do you can do tricks with this topology wise as well. Of course, you can use poly painting to help drive your topology. Okay, so that's that's the tangent <laughs> that we just had. Okay, so moving on here, I now have this piece selected. Okay, so I have that. So let's just look at just this, right? So I can continue working on this the way I want, right? And I'm going to say, you know, just for the sake, let's try a different technique now. I'm going to do a trim curve, and I'm just going to quickly retrim on this. I'm going to trim this up and just create nice, clean topology in the sense I just want to have this. So I'm creating that ability right now. So I'm going to say, okay, in this side, I want that. And then here, I want this to happen through there. Perfect, perfect. Then I'm going to mirror and weld this. Okay, so I'm clicking on my mirror and weld. And now I've got this piece cleaned up more. Okay, and so it's just another way of us cleaning up stuff. Okay, so there's multiple ways to do this. Right, and this is now a surface that I want to use, okay? And I want to create some windows, let's just say, in this, all right? So I'm going to say, all right, I want to have windows are going to be in here, here. We'll put maybe a window in there, and let's turn this off and see where else maybe, okay? So we're going to make this be our, our, um, our bridge. Captain's log, 39.2, right off your decimal point. Okay, so I want to put a window here, maybe a window through here, and then put maybe a nice big window here because I want that bridge ability, okay? So right now I don't have any subdivision levels, okay? So one way I can quickly create some surface for me, all right, was if you think about this, I could use just this piece up here, right, with the one technique, which is now I can say, all right, I'm going to use, I'm going to show you guys two examples right now, okay? So I'm going to duplicate this, all right, and then I'm going to say, let's go ahead now and only look at this, and I'm going to apply the dynamics. So you can see the topology actually is applied. Okay, and I don't want any edge loops. Mm, let's say, let's switch to Z modeler. Okay, and I don't want any edge loops there. Uh, I don't want any there. Uh, I don't want any in here. Okay, the rest can stay. Okay, and then now what I'm going to do is say, okay, there's going to be a window there a window there, and we need a window there, right? Because we got to remember, when I turn this solo off, right, and I look at everything, I got to look at where things are going to be made, right, as an example, okay? So, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to do also a window there and there, okay? So I got, these parts are in essence going to be windows or <clears throat> going to be the the bridge okay and so the only ones I really care about are these purple ones right so now I have just these so you can see the technique of now the benefit is because I did the Z modeler version of this one it's really really low so it's really easy for me to delete edge loops it's really easy for me to, to get just polygon faces like this right it becomes an easy way to go about this. Okay, one more time for what, Chris? Which part? Are you talking about well, just, just the whole, from the beginning again? You want me to rewind all the way to the beginning? How did I, how did I activate dynamic subdiv? So right here is the button. So you can just hit the D key 
which activates it, the shift D turns it off. So again, that's D as in dyna, right? Dynamic, okay? And then shift D turns off. That's at dynamic subdivision levels. There's no dynamic dynamesh though. So I, I'm not sure what you're asking about that. So in dynamesh, there's, there's no dynamic dynamesh mode. It's just dynamesh. When I started the windows, okay, so here, let me do it again. So here, I'll delete this. So in this case, right, again, in this stream, I've shown a, a more than one way technique, right, to clean up the surfaces. And you guys got to choose depending on what you're trying to do, right? If you look again here, right, I got a whole bunch of windows happening there. So this is the technique I'm showing you now right here is what I used here. For this part and this part, it's not the same technique. I used something else to make these pieces cleaned up, right? Because I didn't need the low polygon results as an example, right? Unless I wanted it, okay? So the, all I'm doing here is saying, okay, this is my main piece and I want to create some windowing here and I want to use the pre-existing topology to do it, okay? So I'm just going to duplicate and in essence make a copy. And here, I'm going to even rename this Okay, and I'm going to call it subs, not because I'm hungry and I want a submarine, but because it's going to be subtractive, right? So I'm just now going to solo this out, right? So the only thing I'm looking at is this. So I can do the same thing by holding the shift key and clicking on this, right? And for this one, I know what's turned on right now, which is the dynamic subdiv is turned on. And right now we use I'm using Q grid with a bevel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to apply this. Okay, and now that converted that dynamic into real topology. So you can see the edge loops that appear. Okay, and for me, I don't want I want to make nice big long windows. Okay, so I'm going to say I don't want this edge loop, this edge loop, this one, this one, or this one, and I don't want I don't want these edge loops either. Okay, so I'm just holding the Alt key while I'm in Z Modeler and deleting it. And now I'm saying I'm going to want this portion, this portion, this portion, this portion, and we're going to continue it along there. And you know what? Let's go here. These are all going to be windows, right? So now they're purple, right? So in essence, my goal here for this sub tool is I'm going to be using it with live booleans to create subtractive and cutting into. So for me, again, hard surface is always like playing chess, right? Okay, and then there you go. Oh, Guillaume, this is Paul, by the way. I'm Paul, just... So let's see, you have a question. My edges are not clean. How do I clean them after using the trim brush on my Geo? with Dynamesh. Uh, what I showed previously was would be how you clean them up, which you could do locally as well, right? So if you're gonna use Dynamesh, here, let's see if I have a Dynamesh version in here. Okay, so if you're gonna use Dynamesh, here, let's just, let's just copy this. Let's duplicate this one. Okay, here we go. Another tangent, tangent alert. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, and then let's just let's just divide this up so we have some topology. Okay, and then let's just throw Dynamesh on now on this. Right. So when you guys do this, you're not gonna have super clean right there, right? Okay. So again, what I've already talked about with polygrouping, I'm just gonna go fast through this because we covered this. Um, so I'm going to do a, let's see, a, let's do a group by normals. Let's drop our range. There we go. Okay. Something like that. Right. So now that I have this, right. Remember if you have polygrouping, you can use this polish by groups, right. And you can see that automatically cleans things up, right. So all I'm doing is using this polish by groups, but I'm using polygrouping. Right, and I assign my polygrouping either by painting them by hand, I use the plugin, polygroup it, 
right? And then now I just used just polygroups and using polygroups by normals based upon the normals. Okay? So you guys can also do this by hand. So maybe if I only want a certain, like this edge right here. Okay, so you smooth, right? Smooth. But you guys can tell ZBrush in the brush palette, down here in smooth modifiers, there's a weighting mode. Okay? And you can see there are different types of smoothing. So you see there's a groups intersection, there's tangent edges, there's creases, and there's groups border, right? So I'm going to change this to nine, and then I can smooth, and you can see I can control this as a user now, and then just smooth where I want to smooth only along those edges, right? So this is another way that you guys could go about cleaning. So this is what you would do. So if you're using trim, right, you've already got a clean edge because trim in this case, see, it's making, it's doing a slice and a trim at the same time. So I don't need to clean that. It's already nice. But if you read Dynamesh, right, let me turn groups off. If you read Dynamesh, you're going to make that not so clean again. The only way to maintain that, right, is obviously adding more resolution. And then there, now I've got that. And then now you just continue going. And then I can still come in here and sharpen that up if I want to. Okay. How's it going, Alex? Okay. Jimmy, you are wait. What, what part did you get lost at what I just did there? Right, so all I did was quickly assign, so again, there's no polygroups. I came down here to polygroups. I went to polygroups by normals. I turned the little circle on because it's a different algorithm and I dropped the distance to 10. Okay, and then I just said, give me those, that. And then now I'm saying, because I have polygroups, I'm telling using now polish by groups and polishing it based upon the polygrouping border, right? And then now I just showed you guys, you can do it by brush base as well. So I showed you an option in the smoothing brush now that you can do it by hand. And again, in the brush palette, okay? And if you hold the shift key while you change your slider, you can see what you get, right? So you guys can get these brushes as well in here, right? There is smoothing brushes through here, right here. So you see there's different ones through here. So it's just each brush with that option already on. Okay. Sometimes adding res resolution through Dynamish cut my models in half. So I would need to see what you mean by that. That could be several factors. You're probably breaking a rule, right? So are you talking like it looks like Swiss cheese? So here, if it looks like something like if we do this, if I turn this groups option and do this like that, right? That's because I have this groups option on. That's why this is happening, okay? So what's happening is ZBrush is looking at each polygroup pretty much individually and then trying to cr keep that as its own piece of geometry, but it's a flat plane. And so the number one rule for Dynamesh is water tightness. So this is not water tight. So that's why it becomes Swiss cheese when I read Dynamesh. So I need to turn this off if I'm going to redynamesh, right? So it could be something like that. There could be a lot of factors. You could have too many internal pieces of topology, like you've gone crazy with it, right? So in essence, what I mean by that is, you know, you guys got to remember, this is something that's working on the fly, right? So here, let's change something like this. And then you have this overlapping and then now something like this and you have now this overlapping. You know, as, as we're going along here and, you know, working, okay, this topology that's inside, it's there. So when we go to read Dynamesh, ZBrush has to take the time and go find that, see that, and then break it out and get rid of so that there's no internal topology, right? 
So you could also be running into, you've gotten so much internal topology that the algorithm is just trying to figure it all out and it's having a hard time because you have too much. So maybe what you might want to do possibly, something for you to try, okay, is right now I have all these pieces that they're not welded in any way, right? Dynamesh is going to weld them. You guys could also just do this. You could go into the gizmo, hit that gear, right? So I'm just tapping on the gear. And then I can run live booleans on this. So I can remesh by union. Okay, it's saying no symmetry. Okay, remesh by union. And then there, it's done. And then now I'll re-dynamesh. And that might help the process and it could even make things faster for you. So just something for you to also think about, okay? So back to my windows, back to the windows, back to, okay, so let's delete this. I don't want this one anymore. Okay, so this is the one I'm making the windows from, okay? This is the one that's the original that's now turned on. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the red polygroup. So all that I have left is the purple polygroup. So... I'm going to delete though hidden now. And then now I'm going to say, all right, I want this, right, to have a certain look to it. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to say now Z modeler. I'm going to say let's QMash polygroup all and just pull out. And now you can see what I'm getting here, right? And then I'm going to say let's push in as well and put a new polygroup there. Okay. And now what do you have is something with a thickness, right? That's a little too thick. I think that's a little too much. There, that's enough. Okay. And now if I'm turning this off, okay, I've got now this top subtool, which is the clean piece, right? I got this bottom subtool, which I made from the original subtool, the benefit of me using the Z modeler approach. So no, there's no polygon snapping at this time. No, not with Z modeler. No. But there is with Z spheres retopologizing and the topology brush. That will snap. But no, there's right now you can't snap a polygon to a polygon. You can bridge between polygons and polygons. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is now turn this into a subtractive. And now you can see what this is doing. It's pushing in my surface. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change this up a little bit. And now I'm seeing the change on the fly. You know what? And then let's turn everything on. So I can see maybe where I want that to stop. So now I'm playing with live booleans and looking at the results I'm getting, right, through here. So in fact, I want to now also, let's do this. Let's do a mirror and weld so I can get an edge loop straight down the middle across all. Okay, and then now for this window, let's do an insert here. So let's do this. Let's, let's turn everything back on. Okay, and I'm going to slide this now to maybe there. Let's go right about there. Okay, and insert now another edge loop here and go right there. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is get rid of these polygons, right? So I'm going to say use this to get rid of what I don't want. Right, so what I'm doing is I'm using the ability to have QMesh, right? So you can see there's there's two levels to this in here, right? So I have the ability to use QMesh, in essence, to get rid and move pieces around. Right, so you can see here what I'm doing. Okay, I'm, I turned off symmetry so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. Right, so you can see I'm just getting rid of that piece. Right, and now that's gone. So, right, so if I turn off solo mode and bring everything back again, oops, 
Okay, and if I turn off the polyframe, you can see I've created now that kind of thing happening there. And then obviously I want it on both sides. So I just changed up that window a little bit through there. Right, and so when I'm looking at these now, I was going, okay, let's add a little bit, maybe a little bit more something different here. Let's add another element to this. Okay, so I'm going to say, let's come in here and let's do an inset. Okay, and I'm going to just say single polygon and then I'm going to hold the alt key. And in this window, we'll do an inset and then I'm going to Q mesh this out and then hold the shift key. So it creates something like that. And so when we come back out of solo mode and look, you can see that part's got a little bevel there now. Well, a little, it's a pretty big bevel. Right? So you have this ability as well, right? Or of course, we can now just come here and say, let's do this again and let's change the coverage. Right, and then now, right, I'm adding a little bevel to all of these window pieces, right? Because I'm using the dynamic subdiv to give me the ability and I can see the gap I'm gonna get, right? And I can say, okay, let's, let's go a little bit deeper with those. So let's move backwards. Let's say polygroup all, and then just hold the shift key and start moving it out more. And then now turn on my dynamic. Right? And now this is what I have. Right? So this is creating some kind of little beveling that's happening through there. Right? And I'm actually going to now use my slicing ability here. And I'm going to say let's add a slice through here. Let's add a slice through here. Let's add a slice through here, right? Just adding more topology. So what I'm doing is adding slices through here, right? So you could do something like this, or we can say, forget that, and let's do some smoothing version of this. And now you have that, and then now this is where you come back to creasing. And then you can have variations even in the windows this way. Right, so this is the approach I'm taking for all my windows over here, right? I'm using an existing topology and then I'm editing that topology and changing things up, right? So the beauty here now is I have more topology so I can even say, let's put a little difference in the windows. Maybe this part, let's push the windows in like this. And then now I want creasing through here and through there. Right, and so now when I come out of solo mode, you can even see how that changed the design, right? And then this is, do I like that? This is the beauty of working with this is with live booleans. It's becoming non-destructive. Okay, happy little battle bevels. All right, Alex. Sorry to hear the internet's slow for you. See you in the VOD. So question from AFX Winter, FX Winter. What's the easiest way to do a seamless combine of two subtotals that already have subdivisions? Uh, so duplicate, delete, higher subdiv, remesh by union, Z remesh, subdivide, project all. So you're talking about having two separate pieces of topology, right? And now you want, and they're subdivided and you want them to come together, right? Sure, you could, you can do that. So let me just make something quick that hopefully answers the question. And then here we go, people. Another tangent, another tangent. So let's grab a cube as an example. Okay, and let's, eh, let's divide this up. So it's got divisions. Let's go ahead and let's say append, let's append a sphere. 
and let's move this up and do this, and then let's divide this once as an example, okay? So we've got now a cube and we've got this sphere, right? So you want to have the ability in essence to weld them together and delete the internal inside topology of the sphere is what I'm assuming you want to be able to do, right? So <clears throat> I want to have that ability where we can merge down, right? So I'm going to be able to merge down, okay? But the points don't match. So they're not going to weld together, right? So if I do merge down, we've got it now. It's all one, okay? The problem is you can see with the subdivision levels, it's changed, right? So you can see it's at two, okay? And what we did originally, okay, was we had a cube with different subdivision levels, right? So let's separate these again. So let's split these off, okay? And let's say again, we got this one sitting at this subdivision level, we got this one say, okay, so let's go, this one's at three now, and let's put this one at two. Whoops. Okay, so we've got one at two, one at three. Okay, so here's what you could do. What you put in your chat, okay, is correct. You can completely do what you said. So you could duplicate them to delete the higher, do a projection, but you don't need to do all of that. Okay, that's multiple steps, right? So what we can do, which comics is already talking about it, they both need to be the same subdivision level. So if I have these both at three and three, right? So I got these both where I need them at level three and level three. When you merge down now, you can see you don't lose the three subdivision levels. When you have opposite numbers, so the one was two and the one was three, if you merge those down, you're going to end up with two because ZBrush is going to take the lowest one and then transfer the one that was higher down to the two. Okay. So what I've done here is I have now three subdivision levels with three, right? But everything's not welded yet. Okay. So here's what you could do. You could just freeze your subdivision levels. Okay, and now you can use the various welding options. You guys could go to the gear and you can do this remesh by union, right? So you can click that, that's gonna weld them and then you unfreeze and now you're gonna get back your three subdivision levels, right? So there you go. I could do this technique. It's an awesome sphere, isn't it? Right, and now I've got back my three subdivision levels but everything is welded, right? So when I smooth, you can see it's all welded here. Okay, so the downfall to using the union is it's gonna create triangles. So depending on your workflow, you might not want that. So maybe you're best to, instead of doing, after you've freezed, maybe you use Dynamesh. You're gonna have to use some algorithm to weld everything, right? You gotta do something, right? But the freeze, Subdiv is allowing me to store level two and three in memory. And then when I'm done with my Dynamesh, I'm going to say, okay, I need a little bit more resolution. Perfect. And then bring back, right? And I can bring that back. And then you're good to go, right? Or I can even say, you know what? Forget that. Now that I have this, let's also even just remesh it, right? So now I'm remeshing based upon polygrouping. And then I can tell to bring back the subdivision levels this way. Okay, so effects winter. This is approaches that you could use to combine meshes that have subdivision levels and multiple subtools and then weld them all together, right? These are just techniques that you're able to do, right? And then now I can unfreeze. And now you see I've got three subdivision levels, but now I've got clean topology and it's all welded together right? This is probably the approach I would take. I would probably do oh, merging them all together with either, doesn't matter, the Boolean or Dynamesh. You could probably Z-remesh it if you want to. You don't have to, and then bring it back. Okay, there you go. That's one way you could go about doing this, okay? So back to our ship. Boop, boop, beep.
Okay, so now that we've got these windows going in here, right, and this is going to be bridge, and this is going to be a multi-level, some you know, bridge, and maybe or maybe the top's going to be other other parts. I want to now start putting a little bit more detailing, like um, that I put in mine here. So if I grab mine now, so if we look close at my bridge through here, right, there's just little details that are starting to have happen through here. And you can see, right, the more I start messing with this, right, the more I can make certain things look a little bit better, right, and then I've started adding details through here. Right, so the easiest way for me to do this and what makes it super simple, okay, is a technique that I've already shown in a previous streams. So what I wanna do now is these are my, we'll say, window, uh, windows so sub I just like to abbreviate instead of using subtractive okay just sub so every time I say it now I'm getting hungry <laughs> I'm starting to get hungry okay so my next step then in my process right so I've got these windows where I want them and maybe I want to add more to them change them up and I want to add more some more detailing maybe through here Okay, so I'm going to say, all right, let's go ahead and let's insert a piece of geometry. I don't care what it is. It's not relevant at all. Okay, I'm going to size it way down so it's super tiny. All right, and what I'm starting to make here, let me let me lean back way back on this one. Woo! Now it's just my turning head, which looks funny. Okay, so... What I'm doing here is I'm setting up a workflow now where I've got a clean version of the cockpit. I've got windows, and now I'm adding something else. People, this is the point where I go, you know what? I want to make a folder now, okay? Because I keep adding things only to this mesh, right? I keep adding subtools that are making the mesh become what it is. Oh, pretzels are making me thirsty. Someone knows me. Okay, so this is another Lisa needs braces, Lisa needs braces, Lisa needs braces, Lisa needs braces moment for me. Okay, I'm going to turn on the gizmo. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the pizza boxes. And I'm throwing a party, so I want several people at my party. Okay, so I'm going to say what I want is to hold down control shift, drag out, and get a green box. So what happens is everything else in this particular model goes renders kind of like a every other line. And then the cockpit part or is just only thing that's rendered in full. So what I've done is I've multi-selected subtools. So in essence I can move these as a unit, right? So I'm moving these all in as one big unit right now. But what I want to do is do control F and say, yes, I'm going to make a folder, and I'm going to call this bridge. Okay, and then now that's the bridge. Okay, and you can see it creates a folder with the pieces, right, that are making up the bridge now. Okay, so at any time, I can even come over now to the gear, and I can say transpose set, right, and now I can move these pieces around. Okay, so it starts creating a great way for me to start looking at this, okay? So, this piece, okay, I'm going to make small again. We got this little cube. So, all this is is just some little cube in here, right? And this piece I took. I didn't want this piece. Okay, so... Now that I have this cube, I'm going to call this a uh, bridge um, details. Actually, we'll call this sub. Mm, I really want a sub now sandwich for lunch. Okay. <clears throat> and what I'm going to start to do now is, okay, let's start adding some cool elements to this. Right. So I'm going to switch to this IMM Boolean brush. Okay. I'm going to turn on symmetry. 
All right, and I'm going to say blade one. Let's take this blade and say I'm going to put that blade right here. All right, turn it off polyframe. And what I'm doing now is creating extra pieces here, right? So you can see it's just dropping that mesh there. But what I'm going to do is turn this into a subtractive. And now what it's doing is cutting into the surface. Uh, so I don't like that. Let's do something more like that. Yeah, maybe something like that. Right? That'll break up that line there, create a little bit of difference in the line. Okay, that looks good. Let me reset my gizmo and let me grab this one now. And let's put that one there. Yeah, and let's move that up now a little bit more. Maybe just like that. Right, and now I have that going on up both sides. And let's use this. And I'm going to put like a little, this is some little vent that's going to happen there. Okay, and I want to now put, uh, let's break up what we have going on here. Let's maybe make a little notch in that design right there. So you can see my designing now is going to be able to start getting a lot faster. So I'm going to even say, you know, let's throw this in here and say something like that. And this is going to now even break up the windows a little bit even more for me. Right, and I'm just adding different elements, okay? I don't like what's happening up here. So let's throw maybe this notch in. I'm gonna do this. Let's just, and let's go ahead and do something like that. You know what, and let's rotate it even. Like this, and let's make it be longer like that. And maybe not as wide. And now I've got this little ramp part that's happening in there. Right? So you can see how fast things start coming to life. And all I'm doing is just grabbing certain pieces. And then the beauty again, you guys, everyone, you got to remember is, okay, I can grab this piece. And I'm going to draw that out and put that there. And then maybe let's move this maybe there and like this. And what's really great about this, I have this gizmo selected. I can go through and see, mm, what if it was that piece? What if maybe that piece? What if, do I like that one better? Right? So I can cycle through things here and see maybe something that might even look better to me as far as, as design goes. Maybe I like this, and now maybe I want it to do this instead. And let's make it bigger, right? And start, this starts breaking up, right? The surface. So you've got your silhouette, and now I'm doing tertiary details that is breaking up the surface for me, right? But then it's adding, starting to adding details in here. Right, so you can see, again, now if you go back and look at mine, right, my cockpit, or i.e. the bridge, is done. This is how I want my bridge to look. Now I'm coming up into these two pieces, and now I'm continuing this approach, right? So if we look at this in here. I don't like what's going on in here, right? So I'm going to experiment, right? So... You can see there's a folder I've made. And within that folder, there are also start groups. So this whole thing's in a folder. And now I've got this piece. And then here's my little piece that's creating this. And now I'm going to go, you know what? I want to change up something in here. So I'm going to grab this, right? And then this is, this is why I, I really, really enjoy this workflow for myself. Okay, I'm going to make sure I'm in symmetry mode. I'm going to draw that out. Okay, and in fact, I want to make sure the gizmo is set to my normal. I'm going to do this. Maybe push this in. And what's this look like? 
What is it? and then maybe maybe rotate it? Maybe rotate it the other way. Right? And this is just me experimenting now. Right? That's all I'm doing right now is experimenting. And now maybe what if we did 180 the other direction? Right? And say, mm, let's rotate that. Right? So that alone, I'm already liking better. Right? It doesn't have that perfect you know, point. It's just an, another a design element that's breaking up this piece. Right? And this is how I start putting down, sprinkling my next levels of details. Right? But it's really important that I first did that first designing element. Then I cleaned up the surface so that I can start doing things like this. Okay? And now something like this right? Because this is going to become like, I'm going to make this some kind of little compartment, this little thing, right? And this is me now trying to make some asymmetry on this, which is going to be some really great things you can do, right? So if we even did, as an example, let me pull up a reference for us here, because the Prometheus ship to me uh, is pretty awesome. I really love the design they did with that. So I'm a fan of it, and I'm kind of using it as a little bit of an inspiration, right? So if we look at these, some of the things on this, right? You can see, look, there's the cockpit. See, it's a lot like what I'm doing, right? I'm not really in, right? I got to start doing more things like this, okay? And doing, taking a look at some images. So what I'm, ultimate goal here is I'm making a ship like this, right? And we're going to, I'm going to cut it open and show the interior of it as well. Right? So I'm looking at, say, some certain elements in this. Right? Specifically, here, let me see if I can find a good one from the top. Uh, that's a bigger image. Let's see if I can find a bigger one. Okay. So this looks bigger. Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. So if you look at, say, elements like this right here, right, through here, okay? Or you look at, say, what's happening right here, where it's kind of like a flat surface and then there's like some kind of little bulge or something happening, especially right there. I like what's happening through there. Okay, so let's say I want to add something like that, right? Let's go back to the one that I've been creating in here. And let's say I want on this piece, okay, right in here, I want to put some kind of little bulge item that's happening in there, okay? So what's nice about that is I'm going to use a feature that I think, again, not a ton of people are using, okay? As I'm going to switch to this clean cockpit. Right now, it's low polygon, okay? So just... Just to make an understanding here, I'm just I'm going to duplicate this just so you you have a duplicated version and a non-duplicated version, okay? So I'm going to say now, you know what? I like what's happening here. Let's apply the the mesh, okay? And I'm going to now start to divide up, okay? Give me some more topology in this, okay? I need more than that, okay? I would say that's probably enough. Okay, so you can see I just got some density in here, right? And you can see why I maybe would also get rid of some of the edge looping, okay? So what I got here now is this piece that's divided up. So I've just added some topology to it. That's it. Okay, uh, Vladimir, when you say some small topic about project all function, what are you referring to that? I don't know when you joined the stream, but... Uh, I've been, I showed some techniques there as well. And to Jimmy, your question saying, once you do a welding with Booleans, you're having triangles, right? So if you divide, triangles don't divide well. So you would need to clean that mesh up by either retopologizing with Z-Remesher or doing something else um, by hand, retopologizing. Okay, so... Now that I have this, again, I want to put a little something else right here, okay? And I want it to be some kind of maybe bulged item, 
right? So I'm going to say, all right, I don't need subdivision levels. I'm going to, let's center this, okay? And don't worry about symmetry at all, right? I'm going to click on gear, and I'm going to turn on the project primitives, okay? So I'm going to click on this, and now I have cone central. People, this is like a combination of Lisa needs braces and look up here, look up here, look up. Here, kaka, kaka. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, I now have the ability to project geometrical shapes or anything I want. So, as far as now, you can see, I got this little bulging sphere. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is move it over here. I'm going to tell it to be symmetrical, so it's happening on both sides. Let's size it down a lot more. And now I have this little bulge that's happening through there. Okay. Now what I can do is I can change the shape of this. Or I'm just going to zoom in so you guys can see. Okay, and if I turn poly frame mode on, you see what it's doing to topology. Okay, I'm going to solve all these things for us now. Okay, so what I can do is grab this orange cone and I can change the shape, right? So now this is getting more like a cube shape, right? So now I got some bulge like that, okay? If I go all to 0.5, so you can see right down here. So look right here. Okay, look right, look up here, look at right here, look right here, right here, right here. And when I click on the cone, you see the numbers? So going all the way to one is a cube. Going all the way down to zero is a diamond. Okay, putting it at 0.5 is going to be a spherical shape. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit between those. All right, and I'm going to make it longer. Okay, and I'm going to make it a little bit higher as well. So what I have here now is some kind of little bulge like this happening. Okay, so I've got this surface that's doing this and this, right? And then it's transitioning into this piece. Okay, right now the deformer I'm using is project primitive. That's what I'm using right now. Okay, so I want to now continue manipulating. So all I did was I changed my cone. So I, I made it be less of spherical. I made it be more of a cubic in between sphere and cubic. And now I'm just using the gizmo options in here, right? To stretch it in the axis points. That's it. That's all I'm doing. That's it. That's all I've done so far. Okay, so you got to look at this. So here's if I can position this so you guys can see it better uh, okay here all right so you see that you see this outline here of this big cube and see there's also another little one okay so the big cube outline in essence is the bounding box of the entire sub tool that i've selected right now okay the little box is the geometrical shape that i'm using to project into this surface okay so there are cones that are essence like globo cones that control the whole bounding box. And there are cones that control the geometrical shape sitting in the little box. Okay. So right in here, you see these cones, see they're attached to the little box. So you can see this again, this orange cone was changing the shape, right? On us. All right. And then I have also these cones over here, which you see this one's a blending one. So I can drop the blend, right? And now there's no blend happening, right? So it's really trying to say, so if I pull this all the way up, it's going to be super cubed, right? And then this is what I'm going to get, which is actually, I kind of like better. Happy little mistakes there. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, 
right? Uh, maybe just touch less cubic shape. Yeah, a little bit something more like that maybe. And let's pull this up more so it does that, right? I've just completely changed my silhouette now, right? To this, right? So what we're looking at, just so you guys can see, is this, right? Completely change the silhouette, right? This will help you see the boxes now, okay? So what I can do is tell ZBrush, do I want this to blend more or less? So there's a blending mode through here, right? So you can see how that blends through the surface. Okay, so I have that. And then I also have the ability, this green cone over here you see is for tessellation. So in essence, do I want to take away polygons or do I want to add polygons to this so it just holds the form a little bit more, right? So I kind of like it like this. That looks great, okay? So now I have this, this white cone right here. Again, you see what it is? It's attached to the cubic shape that we're playing with right now, right? So I'm gonna say accept that. And then now I have another cube that I can actually use again. And this I'm gonna use as kind of like making a hole, almost like that. And we'll make it come out like this, maybe. And let's push it down and push it deeper in. So what I just did there is reused the same cube to give me something like that. Right? And then now I can turn this on and say what I want. Maybe something more like that. Right? That just completely changes the look of this now, right? And I'm using this projection ability to do this, okay? Okay, I'll show you the original st start of the bulge piece. Let's let's go to a different piece of topology. All right, so let's let's use let's use this big piece right here, okay? So let's use this piece, which happens to be a Dynamesh. So I'm already ready to go. It's got enough topology here, right? It's got actually more than I really need honestly. Okay, so here, I'm going to just stay in solo mode for this, okay, just so you first can visually get what's happening here. I'm going to turn on my gizmo. Okay, so I've got my gizmo. I'm going to center it, just so it's centered, it's not really matters. This is, again, this is my AD, ADD kicking in, wanting this. All right. So before I show this, there's a great question coming on through our YouTube. What is the best part to improve in your PC uh, to get the best performance out of ZBrush that you possibly can? Okay, there's, this is a tangent to you, the users. Okay, so really there's three main items that ZBrush is going to use and pull more than anything. The first two, which are the most important, is your processor, okay? So how good is that processor? How many cores, which equals how many threads, and then the speed of the processor itself, right? Those things are gonna come into play, right? Because there are, this is a multi-threading software. So if you have more threads, okay, you're gonna be able to spread across the, pro, you're gonna, the program's gonna be able to spread across your processor to do techniques, right? There are some things that are single thread inside of ZBrush. So obviously the speed of the processor is also going to play a role in that as well for all this. The second thing, which is usually the cheapest and the easiest that most people need to upgrade is your RAM, okay? So ZBrush is pulling on your processor and RAM together and they're going to work together, right? And pass things along to each other. So the more RAM you have, the better off you're going to be really. That's the one thing that's going to make the biggest change without having to make a whole new system is upgrade your RAM. And of course, don't forget, RAM also has speed to it, right? So you can say I've got 64 gigs, but if that speed's only 1,800 compared to this computer, I've got 2,800. That's a, that's There's a difference there. Like there's different levels of RAM. You can't just put 64 gigs in. You want to make sure you're putting some good RAM also in the system as well. Right, And then your last thing is going to be your hard drive because your virtual memory is getting thrown on the hard drive 
So what's your hard drive speed and what is that doing? So those are your three main things. So the easiest of those three, obviously, to upgrade is a hard drive and your RAM. Okay, so to answer your question, that's those are the two things that you would upgrade. Me personally now, if I really wanted, in, if I'm in the 3D world, I wouldn't have anything less than 32 gigs of RAM. Personally, that should be that should be baseline now. Is 32 gigs of RAM, and then anything above that is awesome. Like at the lowest, 16 gigs. At this point, there's I wouldn't go any lower than 16 gigs of RAM on any computer. Period. Especially if you want to be in this world, 3D world, 100%. Okay. Okay. So back to this project primitive. Okay. So I'm starting to now use this again. I'm going along the process. And the next time I stream for this project in the next two weeks, in two weeks from now, you will see my ship along a lot further. Okay. So <clears throat> to go through this project primitive again, I'm clicking on the gear. Everyone, let's go. This is step one, step two. Don't make me. Don't make me scare you. Don't make me do it. Look up here. I have to do it, okay? So step one is obviously clicking on the gear. And then right here is your project primitive. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. And then now I've got this cube that's projecting a cube into the surface of this piece. Right? Okay, so if we look at this, I can move this wherever I want. And see, it can be used as a cut piece if I want to. So I'm cutting into the surface. And I'm going to show you how, why it's cutting in the surface compared to if I move it down. Right? At some point, it's going to start projecting into the surface. Right? So there's a difference. This is a great way to like, take a nice chunk out of this and have a nice round corners happening. And I'm not using live booleans right now. I'm just using the cube. Okay, so what I'm going to do is right here, there's a purple cone, because I just want you to get this first. I'm gonna say new surface. So what this is actually doing is it's creating the cube, but you can see now it's no longer being used as a projection. It's a separate piece. So this should help you guys understand that there are two bounding boxes with this tool. There's the primitive that I'm using to project into the surface, and then there's the surface, right? So see if I shrink this down, there's these, and you see these cones, go with this. These cones are with the overall. So think about these cones more as a global setting and think about these cones more as the individual primitive setting. Okay? So far, so good, Mike. Oh, Vladimir, I love it. Computer crap. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Okay. So, Right now, I've turned this purple cone on where it says surface. Okay, so this is just giving me more topology, right? So when it's sitting at one, it's giving me the lowest topology, and I'm pretty much telling ZBrush, you're not going to use this cube to project into the surface anymore. The minute I turn this down, you can see the cube disappears because it's now I've turned it back to what it is by default, which is using the cube to project. Well, the, the cube is sitting way up here. It's nowhere near this piece. So I need to bring it down, right, for it to project into the surface, right? So you, now you can see it's creating the cube notch there for you, okay? So you see that center point right here I'm gonna look at the front you see the center point where there's the gizmo and what I'm referring to is this center portion right here look at in essence look at that yellow square that's the center of this cube that I'm using okay when that goes past the surface that we're projecting into we switch the projection from a union to subtractive right so you can see right now that yellow cube is sitting inside the surface that we're trying to project onto. The minute I start pulling it past, beep, it changes. And now if you look from above, it becomes a subtractive, right? So now if we do it again, you'll see it switch. Boom, it switches. Because now this is sitting inside the surface. Do you get this so far? So far, so good, yes? Is, is anybody not with me? Raise your hand and I'll call on you. Get that joke? Can't see your hands, but 
Okay, so I clearly want to project into this surface. I want something like this, projecting into the surface, okay? And what I would want is I want to create a bulge here and a bulge here. So if we bring back the model, I want a bulge here and some kind of bulging element here, okay? So what I want to do, all right, is go, you know what? I'm going to want it symmetrically on both sides. Okay, so this is where are their cones. So you can see this cone, where is it sitting? It's sitting on the mesh, right? So I want symmetrically to go along the X, right? Because I want this side and that side. So now if I start pulling this apart, you'll see I'll get two cubes now. And now I have two cubes that are going here. So now I'm going to position these. And now I can say, I want that to happen through there now. And this is what really starts to create some really awesome stuff. Because the overlapping I find of shapes for me for hard surface is what separates, starts separating and making it look cooler and bringing it to live more. Like, look how much that changes, right? So if we just, if we get rid of it, Right? There's that or this. And do I want to stop there? Right? Maybe I want to do a layering. Maybe I'll do this where it does stop there. And then this white cone, you see it says accept. So if I accept that, it drops what I did and I can reuse the same cube again over again. And I'm going to size this down now. And now I have something like that happening. So I just did almost like a double projection. Okay, so what's great about this, people, why is this OP? Alistair, I don't, when you, uh, OP. Mm, opposites? Can you elaborate to the OP? My brain's not malfunction. my brain's not functioning right now. Auto duplicate. Because what I did, are you talking about when I click on the white cone? Because the white cone, in essence, we added that because when we were developing this, I wanted this, what I just did there. I didn't want to have to start all over again and I wanted to use the same shape. Maybe I want to use the same shape now again and maybe now I want to use that shape to cut into the surface. Right? And then maybe change that size of that and maybe I want something like that to cut into the surface and maybe not so strong and maybe something that does something more like that. Right, you can see it just keeps getting cooler and cooler in my opinion, right? It's starting to come to life. Like this is starting to come to life now in the front here, okay? The red arrow, the red arrow is sym symmetry. The red cone is symmetry. So it automatically, it's symmetrical. It's like if I was drawing, sculpting on one side, you're going to get the same <laughs> the same sculpt on the other side, right? So that's what it's doing. It's giving you the same shape on both sides. We can't give you a different shape on the other side. Okay, so what it also is really great about this is I'm going to say, okay, I really like this. I'm going to accept this. Okay, and then now you guys know you get this, right? I have this ability where I have symmetry and things going on, right? So I'm going to tell ZBrush, okay, I have a certain primitive that I want to do. And what I would like to do actually is switch this primitive, okay? So this yellow cone here has different types of primitives. So let's go back to this simple piece here, okay? And we're going to use this. So you guys can see what's going on, All right? So let's take again our project primitive. Okay, I'm gonna go this way this time with it. So right now I've got a cube shape. I know if I change this, I can go for a sphere and then I can go into a diamond, right? And then now I know I can accept that. And then now watch, I can pull this out and then make that be like a subtractive. Like this is why we do that, like look at that, that's awesome right? 
That's awesome. And then we can turn that into a brush. There's so many things we can do here. Okay, so <clears throat> what we're also going to be able to do is this. I'm going to reset this. So I'm going to click on this gear and I'm going to reset it. Okay. And I'm going to come this way. All right. And instead of doing this cone, okay, I'm going to move this cone. And so now you have two, three, and then a four. So there's actually four different types of things here. So I can do now this one. I can do this one, which this is now a cylinder. Right? So I can turn this into something like this. And then I can, do I want this? If I put everything at 0.5 here, right? It just becomes a cylinder. Right? So this is a cylinder shape. But then I can add tapering to that. Then I can actually make it have more squared right? So I change this to primitive type three, which primitive type three is a cylinder. What's happened at 3D art with Javad? Okay. So what I want to do is actually use primitive two. Okay. Cause this is going to give me the most options of things that I want to do. And I want to do kind of like a smaller bulge that's long. Okay. And I want it to kind of be rounded and more like this. And I don't want as much, let's see, yeah, something like that. Okay, and let's see, yeah, like that. And I want this to be more like just a tad, yeah, like that. Okay, so this is giving me that, right? So this can be now something like this, right? So I've got roundness happening, okay? And then if I want to get rid of complete, right? You have something like this, right? So if I go back to my ship now, where are you? There you are. Okay. Here, I want to put something else over here, right? So I want to have the ability here. I'm going to, I'm just going to full reset, right? So I'm back to a spherical shape, right? So I'm going to bring this down here. It's got to be a lot smaller. That's too big of a sphere. I'm just going to move it into place. So a lot smaller. And then I want it symmetrically on both sides. So I'm going to pull out that red cone, right? And now you can see what I'm getting is a spherical bulge on there. Maybe, I don't know, maybe this, maybe I want this instead. Okay. And if I want more detailing of this, this is a tessellation thing. So this cone over here, this, this big green cone adds tessellation. So it defines the shape more. So you can see now I have something like this. Okay, but what I want to do is I want to switch to primitive two. And now I have two cones and I'm going to say, okay, I want this to flatten out more that way and more that way. I don't want as much of this. Let's bring it down a notch and not as wide this way. And let's go more wide that way. Right? And now I'm just finding what I want this to look like. So maybe I want something more like that. Okay, and what's really nice, you see this these white well, these white dots? Right? So if I I zoom in here, see those white dots? I can actually use those as a clipping. So I can say, I'm going to put some lights here, right? And now this is clipping it. So I'm cutting off, right? Right here in the projection. 
So now I have something like that happening. Right? And then I can say, okay, I want to make this a light. I'm going to say accept that. I know now I get a copy of this. And I want this to be used in a different way, right? So I can say I'm going to use it as a cutting in tool now. And let's go something like that. And maybe something like that. All right, so I'm reusing the piece over again. Right? And then now this is how I start to use the projecting ability. And right, you can see just in this stream with me talking to you what we started doing to this, right? So if I was just going at it as an artist, you know, I would just go, go going as an artist, right? So what is also very nice about this, what you guys also have to understand, here, let me grab something else. Let me show you something else very cool about this project primitive. So I'm going to put on the project primitive, right? I'm going to, it's Sphero, it's got this shape, okay? And then I'm going to say this white cone, I want to radial symmetry this. So I can actually do a radial symmetry of this based upon what symmetry I want, right? So I can do Y, X, and Z, right? So I decide what radio symmetry I want to do. So I can do stuff like this and say, okay, let's size this down. Let's do more of them, something like that, right? And then I can say, beautiful. So I'm going to accept that. All right, I'm going to accept, pull up. I'm getting the same thing. Let's size it down, let's push it in a little bit more. And see, I can get stuff like this too. It's just, it's so powerful if we just sit and see the things that we can do with some of these, with these features. It's just, it's, it's, it's awesome, <laughs> right? And this is just one feature that I'm messing with, right? You got to think about layering other features on top of them, right? And then now I can even add more symmetry. Maybe I want that now. This is awesome. I have a lot of fun with this tool. Um, it's really, really fun to mess around with and you get a lot of happy mistakes. So I really enjoy figuring out what I can make happen with this. Like just this tool alone, you could just go crazy, right? So here I can accept and then now pull this out. Let's pull it in now. And now I have that and let me Size that down a little bit, size it down more, size that down more. Right now, I, I just like that, I did that, right? Very fast, simple, moving along here, right? And say, okay, accept it. I'm going to say accept that, right? And then now I'm going to say, let's reset this. I'm going to say reset full again. So I go back to the beginning. Let's pull this up. I'm going to go here. Let's do symmetry again. Oops, not accept. Oops, I accepted. I accept the challenge. Okay, let's go symmetry here. Let's see, we want to go along. No, let's go along the X. Okay, I don't want this as big, All right? I'm going to pull this out more because I want it to be a cut and I'm going to stretch it and then I'm going to pull it forward more so I get something like that and let's pull it down more like that and then now maybe let's widen that and then there you go. I don't know, this could end up being some kind of rocket boost in the back or it's part of a part of a drone piece. It's endless to what we can do here, right?
it's really, it, there's so many options for us to go and so many things that we can do, right? So again, this is now my challenge to you all. Start building a ship that you can use just like way I've been building this one. Right, and then now you can see I'm starting to do my detailing process of this. So I've got all the shapes I want, everything's clean, and now I'm gonna start going through and making it look cool, right? So this is now moving into this part here that I'm talking about with inserting these pieces and doing these projection is like stage three to me. So stage one was the designing element, Stage two is what we talked about earlier in the stream about cleaning up pieces. And now stage three is this, using things like project primitive, using things like live booleans to start and make this thing come alive, right? And a lot of times I'm going to get happy little mistakes that I didn't even really think about. It's just once I get going, then I start, you know, look, it's just like, like this wasn't in the original design, but I, I personally, I like that part of my design now. And I'm continuing to look through here and seeing what I can change and changing things up, right? So this was not in the original design and now I'm gonna add some more elements to this, right? I might just wanna add just, I don't know, a cube is the only thing, right? So looking at this, I might say, you know what? Let's switch to, let's switch to this and I'm just gonna throw a quick cube in here, right? And I'm gonna, push this down and then let's make this be a lot smaller and then it needs to be creased. So I'm going to crease it and then I'm going to say, let's stretch it. And then maybe skinnier. So I'm just adding some kind of scribe line element in there now, right? And then now this is just a this this is all this is. It's not this isn't this isn't in essence rocket science, right? This is just me just grabbing shapes now and messing around and seeing what I like and what I don't like. Right? So now I'm going to do this and I'm going to say, "You know what? For that piece, I'm going to also do something else. I'm going to say Z modeler. Whoops. Let's switch to Z modeler. I'm gonna do a mirror and weld. So I got a center point in here. And let's see, we're symmetrical. And I'm gonna insert an edge loop here. Okay, and so this is what, I, what I'm doing right now is this, right? And then I'm gonna say, let's crease that as well. Okay, and then now I'm gonna say, let's mask this complete edge loop and inverse. So the only thing that's unmasked, right, is this one part. And then now I can say, well, what does it look like if I do that? Right, okay, that doesn't look cool at all. <laughs> so I also want, not only do I want that, I want that edge masked as well. So I want maybe something like that and then inverse that and then now pull on that with the gizmo and see what I get. Just adding a different uh, something in there and then there you go. Now I have that, right? And that's what I'm going to start doing throughout this project now. I'm just going to keep throwing things like this at my ship and then by next stream. So I'll be streaming about this ship again in uh, a couple weeks. Right, and I'll have my ship more further along. So what I would love for you all to do is if you guys are enjoying this and what we're talking about, I challenge, I challenge you. Challenge the user, the users to make your own ship. So if you just join me for this stream, there is a part one where I go through the blocking out. So I would encourage you to watch that. And then this is obviously part two. So this is automatically getting uploaded to our, tw our Twitch and our YouTube. So you can find this on both. Okay. And I would love for you all to post on ZBrush Central. Okay. And put the hashtag. Um, again, here, let me put, or not the at sim, the at. So you would put at Pixel Paul. 
right? If you guys put that, I'll get an email and that way I can see what you're doing. Uh, I There was one person that did do it uh, my last stream. I would love if you guys, more people would do it. So uh, let me pull up the one too that the artist did just from the last stream. Right, so let's say at Pixel Paul. I, I the problem is I have a lot of comments on here. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Toy toy. Give us a talk amongst yourselves. Coffee to coffee talk. Coffee talk. Coffee talk. Uh, I've got so many things in here. I don't, let's see, I think it's this one. No, sorry. Oh, well, can't find it. Okay, so go on Zebra Central, and then when you guys post, just put that at Pixel Paul, and I will get it. I'll, I'll get an email in essence. Okay. So I would encourage you guys all, if you could, that'd be amazing if you want to go along this journey for me. And so the next one will have way more, way more details done. And then from there, we'll go into the, the last stage, which is starting to add like small things like damage or some weathering items, some things like that. And then we're going to start, I'm going to start building the interior of this ship. Okay, so you're curious about other options under the gear icon. You mean scale, offset, rotate? Do they work in the same way like in Gizmo? So they're different. They're different, very different, right? So you got to look. This this is a deformer, right? So if we're coming to this and you're looking at this and I say go to rotate through here. So this is a former rotation, right? So I can rotate. And see, I can snap in one angle and then also come to another angle and rotate this way. And then this is, the benefit is, oh, you know what? I don't like that. I can go back to zero and then back to zero, right? So this is where the deformer could help with rotate. Same thing with scale, right? So if you're going to use the scale one, I can scale one direction. But then I can say, oh, I don't like that and I can come back and put it back at zero. And I get back the form. If I'm doing that with this, see, it's harder to get back. Where was I? Right? You would have to do undos, in essence, right? So if I did this, the only way to get back the form is an undo. Where if I did it, if I'm doing it this way, right, all I have to do is just move the cone back to zeros. Right? And don't forget about Masking will also play a part in this as well. It's just, you know, the, the, there's certain deformers that are just like a skew. is like a skew. Like you want to skew it, right? There's going to be times where you want to do something and the deformer is going to be what you want, right? But then there's unique formers like extender, being able to do stuff like this. Right, they get some very unique, beautiful shapes. Okay? That's all it is. It's just having the ability. And that's the beauty thing also about using the remeshing options. So remesh by Dynamesh. You can actually set the polygon count and then let go. And then I can do now. Instead of doing undos, I'm just going through the cone. And then I'm stopping the cone when I got, okay, that's enough. I don't need any more of that. Or no, you know what? I need to go down lower again. This is see this is the benefit of it being in as a deformer. Okay? And then obviously the same thing for Z remesher. I can say right here and set detect the polygon count and then it'll start remeshing it. Right? And then here I can say be symmetrical and then remesh it. So I'm going to say around the 5000 mark and now it's remeshing it. Okay, so this is the benefit of it being in a deformer for you. So hopefully that makes sense to you. 
Nice. Whoa, alpha metal is are you seriously? That seriously just happened? Alpha metal on uh tw I think you should probably I think it's, I don't think the if they, if you're for for real, I think the police would probably be cool that you're an actual witness and not worry about what you were doing in all honesty. I would just call them and say you weren't available, honestly. Well, wow, that's a major thing, man, that you witnessed. That's crazy. I would definitely just contact the police and say I wasn't available to speak. I am available now, and I, you witnessed it. That's crazy. Um, okay, so Sandman, if you're still around, they ask, can a high-quality vectors be turned into primitives used this way for hard surface? Oh, absolutely. For what is the best workflow to go high def, say text and design from a vector onto a hard surface? Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that we'll get into also the next stream as well. Is converting, you convert them into a, a brush, right? You want to buy a ZBrush t-shirt? They're available on our store. I don't know what sizes are available anymore, but you can buy t-shirts on our store. So if I go to the store here, hold on, I'll give you a link if you're if you're really wanting this. Well, let me get to the store. Dun, 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 dun. Let me get ZBrush. Uh, hold on. Pixelogic merchandise. Yeah, here you go. So if you really do want to buy a t-shirt, there's the Pixelogic store. No no news on the Peel UV. No. Got no news for you. Oh, awesome. Making an N95 mask for a local hospital. That's awesome. I know there's a lot of that going around. In fact, I know there's a dentist in New York City that made a mask that's free to download that he put up that he made in ZBrush. Um, and then he's making it so people can 3D print it. Um, so that's about it. I'm going to have to get going on, but do you guys have any other questions that maybe I can ask before uh, I go? And yeah, you can get a cap from that store too if you do want a cap. You're creating Dynamesh Mesh to create a shell, but it only hollows a minimum wall thickness of two millimeters or a minimum wall thickness. Thank you. There is. You should be able in that plugin that he wrote is there, you can change your wall. Thing. I don't have that plugin installed, um, but all he, that plugin is using already exists inside of ZBrush. All Joseph did was pull this, this slider. So you can use that slider. He has that slider in the plugin. Okay, so uh, I don't have the plugin installed, um, so I can't pull it up to show you where that could be. But I know he has a slider there. Will I see the cap if I you buy one? You mean do I see if the sale went through, Marty? What do you mean? You can wear it and then send me a picture. <laughs> oh, they're sold out? Mmm, monkeys. Uh, I'll have to see uh, if there's any more resources. Obviously, we're all working differently because of the COVID-19 as well. So um, it might be something where our staff isn't really coming into the office right now. We're all pretty much working from home. So uh, the staff that normally monitors the merchandise is not here to be able to monitor the merchandise. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, and if you don't know, now you know, there's been a trial. We updated the trial, the 2020.1.1. 1. 1. 
So we we'll reset those trials also for the COVID-19. So there is a 30-day trial available now that's been uh, going through there. Uh, we also will have more streams from us, Pixelogic, us. So myself, Daisuke, Solomon, and Joseph. We're going to be streaming a lot next week and continuing on. So keep an eye for the updated schedule coming out. Um, we're going to have a lot more streams going on. In fact, I'll tell you right now, I'm streaming again next Tuesday. So, but it's going to be a different topic. I'm going to bring, this is going to be my Thursday streams, which is about the project. And my Tuesday streams are going to be about dissecting a very specific feature and then looking at it and how we can use it to build something with it. Go ahead, uh, life lover. What's your question? You the ninja, you want a free license, huh? Gift you a license. There's something coming down the road that maybe you'll be able to get a free license or you could do a subscription. I don't know if you're aware of that actually, that we do now have subscription service where you can monthly get ZBrush for $39.95 or for six months, $179.95. So you could do that. How did I subtract geometry when I was in this uh, projection mode? Here, well, let me show you again. Okay, so let me just undo so we get back to a cube based. Okay, this is good. All right, so let's reset, full reset. Okay, and now I have this. I'm going to say let's do a project primitive, right? So I'm just using this to pull the primitive out. Okay, so let's go a little bit bigger. Let's bring it down. Okay, so again, if you see this yellow square right in the middle, that's the center of the mesh. That's the center of the gizmo, everything, right? So we're using that as a guide to tell ZBrush when to switch the project primitive to being a union or a subtract. So the minute this, if you just even look at, look at that blue line, right, which is the rotational line, the minute that goes past the cube, See it. See that this is no longer bulging, and now it's a subtract, right? Because this is sitting outside the actual surface that I'm trying to project into. Okay. Does that help, Life Lover? Does that answer your question for you? I have no idea why the shipping costs would be. It depends where you live. It could be because of where you live. Where do you live, Cosmics Legend? Comics Legend, where do you live? That would be, that. we don't control that. It's whatever the shipping costs are. Okay, so for the, the, the thickness here, I'll actually do a Dynamesh thickness for you, okay? Because I use this all the time for my 3D printing. Okay, so... When I Dynamesh something, you've got a Dynamesh now, right? And now you want to put a thickness. Well, for the first thing is, I would probably want to set the scale of my world, okay? So I like to use Scale Master for that. So I would say, okay, Scale Master set scene scale. And I would say, okay, this item is actually 2 by 2.58 by 2 inches. Like that's how big this item is. I know that. So now I'm telling ZBrush, this is a 2 by 2 by 2, let's just say, okay? And now this particular tool is now set in inches. So to the point where if I switch the transpose line, each one of the big notches is an inch. So this is an inch. So this is a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. So from, from here to here is an inch and a half. And you can see up here in the top left, right? It's giving you even the distance. So if I start dragging this out, I've just now moved that 2.7, right? So this is the benefit of using Scale Master. I am in LA. We are in LA. Uh, then I don't know why the shipping is so much if it's only going to San Francisco. Um, I, I don't, I'd have to look into it. If you want to send me an email, I can take a look at it from there. So you can just send me an email and I'll, I'll have the staff look into it. I don't. It could be something because of COVID. All the shipping costs have gone up maybe. It's very possible. So there's my email. Okay, so 
back to this. Okay, so now that this is set, right? What he did in the plugin is once you've set the world, then he'll have a slider that you can then put specific thicknesses like two, three, four, six millimeters and so on. But all he's doing is he's grabbing this slider. So what I do now to create a thickness, so all I have to do in my case is switch to an insert mesh brush. It doesn't matter what. I'm going to hold the Alt key and draw anywhere. Not relevant where. Okay. And then I'm just going to move it away from the surface. Right. And then now if I clear my mask, control click and drag and hit create shell, ZBrush has seen that there was a subtractive piece drawn out and sees that it's in DynaMesh mode. So then what's it, what's it does is create a thickness. So you can see if we put on our display properties, you can see now I have a thickness there. Right? So now, excuse me, I got a thickness going all the way around. And if I really want to know what that is, I can switch to the gizmo to transpose. And transpose has the ability to snap. So I can snap from one point to another point like that. And look at the top, and that's 0 0.02. Right? So it's 0 0.02 thickness right now is what I have, inches. Okay, so if I want something a little bit more thicker, here, let's... So you see, there's my internal piece. There's my external piece, right? So let's delete... Let's say delete hidden. Okay, so then now you just have to figure out your math. Okay, so if the thickness of four was 0.2. If I do an eight, okay, and then now I do the negative draw out, I'll move it away from the surface, clear the mask, create shell. It's now using the negative right ability with dynamesh to create the shell but now it's going to have more thickness to it right and so now now you can come in here and you can see again what your thickness is if you want right so i can go from here to here and see how it's 0.5 right now and then i have it on an angle whoops So I can say right there, they're 0.5 inches, right? So that's, in essence, this is what he's using to do that. Okay, yeah, I'd love a ruler. So what you also can do, obviously, because with me, I'm printing SLA. So when I'm doing this, I also make drainage holes, right? So when I'm actually doing the negative, I'm keeping it, right? So I'm keeping this negative because I need it to do a drainage hole. So what I mean by that is if we do this now, clear, and then I do create shell, we're going to create the shell and also make sure that it's got a hole with closure. So you mean by that is, so you can see this. So this is the inner portion, right? But then it also made a hole so it's like well, it's watertight in essence like i could pour water in this and then you could actually hold the water like a jar right so and then this would be my drainage hole from when i'm 3d printing to make sure all the resin comes out so i don't waste resin sitting inside and it's leaving liquid inside all right well thank you for joining comics legend vladimir uh, Montana, let's see, all of you, lo life lover, is Mountain still here? So I appreciate you guys joining. Again, I will be streaming again on Tuesday, but a totally different topic. This project will be continued in a stream two weeks from now, but on Tuesday I'll be streaming again. And don't forget, our, our Dice K um, will be streaming in Japan. He'll be also taking a look at ZBrush Core. So... Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you had a great time. I know we're all stuck in and doing this uh, thing. We're working from home or just stuck at home. So I appreciate you taking time to jump in here and 
comment with me and make this a, a viable, fun stream. It's been a blast. Now I challenge you all. You've got some time. If you got it, go make a sci-fi ship inside of ZBrush. Just give it a challenge and then come back to me or like really I can help you daily if you guys do post on ZBrush Central because then I can go comment on your pieces on ZBrush Central and maybe share some tips and share some videos with you. Okay? So please be safe. Okay? Make sure you're following all the uh, social distancing. Okay? Be safe. Hopefully everyone is doing well. Thanks for watching. I'm on my way out. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. I'm out. See ya!